to just draw your attention to uh, what Jesus said the Holy Ghost was going to do when he sent the Holy Ghost. And he said, remember he said it was expedient that I go away and that I can send you the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged and then Psalms that is in John chapter 16, the Gospel of John 16, 8 through 11. And then on here I've got Psalms 120, verse 4, sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. That's uh, a curse that a soldier of Jesus Christ has as a weapon. When necessary, he uses it. This, this is a fire fire of the word proceeding out of the mouth. Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. So I hear people say, do not judge. God is judge. Well, this Jesus says, when I said in the Holy Spirit, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. How does he do that? Well, the Holy Spirit was sent to those who believe. As, as many as have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. These are the recipients, the disciples and followers of Jesus Christ are the recipients of the Holy Ghost which has this work, is this manifestation. And so if a person does not manifest himself in Christ by reproving the world of sin and of righteousness that is there's those who say none are righteous and you reprove the world of sin and of righteousness declaring the righteousness of Christ the righteousness of God in Christ in us who are born again by the blood washed by the blood the washing of regeneration and renewing of the mind by the Holy Spirit and of judgment, that is, to discern evil from good, to judge that which is right, to judge a false apostle, to judge a false brethren, all these things, this is a work of the Holy Spirit that works in us as many as are born again. So those who say, do not judge, and who are you to judge, don't have the Holy Ghost, because if they did, they would know what it does in them. The Spirit of Christ. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, the Scripture says. And then over here on this side, salvation is not a pledge of allegiance. Many people don't seem to know that. I pledge allegiance to the flag. And then you can replace that to God. You don't pledge allegiance to God or salvation as though it's a repetition but this idea that salvation is not a pledge of allegiance is referring to those who think God and country are the same thing and that serving serving in the army or in the military is like serving God and anyone who serves in the military is going to go to heaven. That kind of thing. It is not, salvation is not a pledge of allegiance like to the flag or anything like that. It has nothing to do with the nation. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. It is a heavenly kingdom. Sad. There's people that believe this. And then there's going to be a wake-up call coming out of like Jeremiah verse Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 31 a noise shall come even to the ends of the earth for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations 
America being the big one with the LGBT and the pornography and the slaying of the innocent blood in the wombs. Those three things are top. Those are top abominations. The Lord has a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will plead again by reproving the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of righteousness because I go to my Father. Jesus is no longer here on earth. So the Holy Spirit is taking that course of what Jesus would do. And what Jesus would do is manifest in the Holy Spirit in those who have received him. As many as received him have received the power to become the sons of God. Little s. He will give them that are wicked to the sword. The sword of the Spirit. Or also the physical sword. The weapons, those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. And that's the violent man. That's the man who finds power in his guns, how many guns he has in his armory. But God has opened up his armory, which will shake this world to its core. And in front of the battle, it'll be an offense battle, will be the praises, the high praises, of the saints, executing the judgments written, binding kings with chains and nobles with fetters of iron, because when their obedience obedience is fulfilled, this honor have all the saints. This is the crown, the crown of authority that we have in Jesus Christ. But not everyone will obtain that crown because they don't run the race lawfully. They cut corners, they compromise, and they are carried they're carried about with weights on their shoulders where they can hardly walk. So let us lay aside the sin that so easily besets us and run the course, looking on to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. By faith we see him who is invisible.